The mics are back on. This is Radio Entrepreneurs, and we are sitting right in the middle of our studios at the MTP Software Headquarters in Natick, Mass. M- Mass. MTP Software, the leader in sports CRM. Check them out if you like sports. And my co-host is the reformed attorney, Peter Myerson, now author. It's, it's great to be here, Jeffrey, <clears throat> especially with this particular guest. You're all choked up. I am. I okay, am. I'm, I'm because sad. we're speaking to your heir apparent in your succession plan, Eleanor Udo, founder of Feigenbaum and Udo LLC. Did I get it right? You got it right. Wow. Nice to be here. <laughs> all right. All right. So you're the upgrade <laughs> on the Studebaker to my right. <laughs> she, she is an upgrade. I'm version 3.0, yes. <laughs> You're Peter Myerson 3.0. <laughs> so tell us about yourself. So I'm a corporate attorney. I've been practicing for about 35 years. I can't believe it. Um, and I've known you every one of those. You have. <laughs> really? Guy. The whole time? The, pretty much the whole yeah. time. Did you start at the same firm originally? No, actually, I started out as a tax attorney at Arthur Anderson. And then I went to Sharon and Lodgen. And I was at um, Davis Mom and Diogestein for a while. Oh, he was there. Your ships yes. did not cross paths. Well, we did very much so. That's oh, how. Very much. That's how Great. I that's went over to Was he your Seth. department head? He was. Really. Well, it was actually was just the two of us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we were the only, we were the department. You just shot that one down. <laughs> I would say something and Eleanor would disagree with me. <laughs> <laughs> and we'd have a vote. It's like everybody was, else. He was the partner, so he always won. <laughs> That's why she started her own firm. <laughs> He's not easy to argue with. <laughs> He's actually usually very right, so it is not easy to wow. argue with him. <laughs> Judith gave you that script, no, his wife. No, I think she would probably disagree with she me. She would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I do predominantly corporate law. I do real estate, and I also do some nonprofit. Right, that's interesting. I've used Peter for thirty years as corporate counsel. I don't use Judith for corporate counsel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I thought I was your trial attorney. <laughs> <laughs> so, why did you open up your own law firm? So I was actually I loved practicing in Boston, but I had a, a little girl, first my first child, and after about a year of trying to balance work and uh, and being a mom, I decided I just could not handle it. So my partner, my husband, was had his own law firm, so I joined him. He's Mr. Feigenbaum? He's Mr. Feigenbaum. Okay. So, uh, that's why his name comes first. That's why he was there first. <laughs> right. Actually, it sounds better, Feigenbaum and Udo. And so we've been uh, practicing together about 27 years, and it's worked out great. He's the best partner ever. He's great. He's an estate planner. Wow. Yes. And he's a great estate planner. So tell us about the firm. How many are in the firm, and how do you split up the work? It's actually, splitting up the work is very easy. I could not draft a will if my life depended on it, and Richard could not draft a corporate contract if his life depended on it, so it's very easy. He's an estate planner. He does all of the estate work that comes into the firm, and I do pretty much everything else. Litigation, we send out. We have a, a list of litigators that we trust. Uh, it's just the two of us in terms of lawyers. We've got a few support staff. We like it small. It's been great. It was um, a, a very conscious choice as a business model, and we've been really happy with it. Just small, sweet. It's interesting. So, yeah. you know, I happen to, you know, I, I've described Eleanor to a variety of people as somebody who's smart, reliable, um, and responsible, mm-hmm. which is, I think, sometimes very hard to find Thank you. Um, as a lawyer. But I know you do other things. Mm-hmm. So um, I know you are very charitable in, in what you do. Can you, you mean in her work? In, no, in, no, in her... No. Co- and in the she, community, you mean. In her community. I'm just clarifying, right. Yeah, no, I think it's... A, I'm it, charitable in my work, too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I've written off some nonprofit I, work. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... that's Part of the <laughs> practice of law. I mean, you know. <laughs> so I am a, a volunteer. Being a volunteer is a very important part of my life. And uh, in the la- for the last five years, I've been uh, conducting an art class for veterans at the Bedford Veterans Center um, quarters in Bedford, Mass. Um, and I've been doing that uh, once a month for four or five. We're go- I think we're starting actually our sixth year. Last night was. Um, was our monthly meeting, and it's great. And we have veterans that wander in, and I hear stories that I could never imagine, and I have fallen in love with these people. They're amazing. 
Last night we had my I had my first female veteran join the group. It was it was a wonderful experience. So what does the group do? So we basically have art supplies. So we're there. People come in. They can draw. They can color. But predominantly we're there just to talk. And um, I've heard a lot of stories about what people have gone through and what they've gone through post. Uh, combat and it's been um, dramatic and enlightening. But it's tough stories. It breaks your heart. Tough it stories. It breaks your heart. You know, I, I haven't been with those, but you see, I'm wearing on my wrist uh, from when Chris and I were in Israel with 16 entrepreneurs last year, Brothers for Life, which are the disabled oh. uh, Israeli war veterans, and we went to have dinner with them in one of their in their sort of social club, and you know, I don't think there was a dry eye in the room. And yeah. hasn't it changed your life still? It's something like that. Impacts I'm wearing you. it. Yes. It just and everyone lasts. I know, other than Chris, actually still wears it every day. Mm -hmm. We all do. Mm -hmm. You know, they just really affected us. It does change your life. Right. I went to Togo about five years ago to do some distribution of, of bed kits. Um, Togo is one of the poorest countries in the entire world. It, it's still, to this day, I still think of those children. It has impacted me. I, I, I wish more people would do that. It would change. Travel the world. and see underprivileged. Travel. Right. See, and I, I My mother used to say to me, more important than university is that you travel the world before you graduate. Absolutely. See the other side of things. Right. But there was a different time then. Right. I no could travel alone all over the world. And yeah. I was, you know, she was only worried would I come home. <laughs> You'd fall in love with Italy or something. And right, that I'd fall in love with the wrong person, fall in love yeah. with the country, not come home. I did call home once and say, I'm going to sail around Africa. And that was probably the only time I ever remember her saying no to me. And did you? They offered me to be a crew on a, on a 175 foot sailboat. So you turned it down? Yeah, she was pretty. She, she, I, wasn't sh I was shocked. She never said no to me. Hmm. And that was the only time I can ever remember. And she was pretty firm. You're a good son. <laughs> I don't I'm know not, about that. I'm not sure my son would say, <laughs> okay, mom. I, well, I was kind of apprehensive anyway, you know, yeah. Africa, 175 foot boat. That's, that's a big challenge. It actually sounds fun to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to climb a mast. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I look at a mast, I think, how did they get up there? <laughs> well, that's it. If you're really going to be a professional crew, I know this isn't why yeah. you're here. You have to be able to climb the mast. No. I don't want to climb the mast. No. I'll do anything else but climb the mast. I could never. I'll go down with the ship. I'm not climbing the mast. No, nah, I'm with you. I take that back. I'm with you. That doesn't sound like fun. It's just not my thing, you know. I do have my small phobias. So. <laughs> no, that's a big phobia. That's a tall phobia. Right. So, Peter, how would you describe your experience with Eleanor? You know, because you really, you know, I've known you as a pretty... Uh, when you came to your work, you were perfectionistic. You didn't like other people touching your work. You wanted to do it. You were the only one who could do it right. And maybe that was true. He but all of a sudden, so well. <laughs> but all of a sudden, there's Eleanor, and you're telling us she's better than you are. Well, I, 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 don't th I think I, she's certainly different than I am, and, and maybe she is better than I am because, you know, I think one of the characteristics that we both have that is good is that we hear what our clients are saying to us which I think is a fairly rare talent. Um, not to pound my own back, but rather Eleanor's. And, you know, she, he, she always heard people well. And we always got along. There was always kind of like a, a friction, a professional friction. But I think on a personal level, we always got along great. Always. And, you know, the, the personal friction, I never minded because I like being challenged. She likes being challenged. And... You know, that's the way you learn and the way you grow. Um, you know, and it's, it's frankly what I always enjoyed, uh, you know, about collaborative practices. Um, you know, it's, I, I would have had trouble being in a, in a two-person firm, although my last firm might just as well have been. You had a, you had a group practice that you were the only one in. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's, that's a lot truer than you think. <laughs> so in your, author, in your work as an author, have you used characteristics that you've learned from Eleanor that you put into any of your characters? I, I think my characters... Because you do draw upon experience. Yeah, you do. And you have to kind of have people in mind. Um, I don't know that I've ever consciously... She's not the tall blonde who murders people in their sleep. No, she's the she's the tall brunette, the <laughs> short brunette. <laughs> short, short. <laughs> Short's the operative word. 
<laughs> vertically challenged. <laughs> we all are. <laughs> so, Eleanor, I'm sorry, you know, time does go fast, but you're going to come back here this year. I'd love it. Peter's going to be coming all the time. If somebody's looking for you at the firm, yes. can you tell us how to find it? Hopefully people don't have to spell out the firm <laughs> name. You can actually, it's not a great marketing name. <laughs> you can actually email me directly. My email address is emu, E-M-U, like that ugly animal, the emu. Oh, that's, that's cool. Isn't that great? Yeah, I sort of realized that. <laughs> at elderlaw.com, E-L-D-E-R-L-A-W.com. Why did you pick Elder Law? I didn't. My partner did. My husband, he's an estate planner. He started the firm first. So. Good name. <laughs> Locked up that name. He did. That's he did. very helpful. Quite. Right. He's quite the marketer, unknowingly. He, very good marketer. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, we're going to see you again in the year 2000. We know that. And uh, thank you, Peter Myerson. And uh, we know we're going to see you a lot, too. We won't let go of you. It's always a pleasure. Always Peter Myerson, author. What's the name of your book? Heroes in a Different Time. Oh, wow. And uh, we are going to be posting his book on our website. So uh, thanks to Nathan. And we're going to take a break. My name is Jeffrey Davis. <laughs>